Welcome back to Three Inquisitive Kids. In the past four lessons of this unit, we have covered the two basic properties of linear equations, as well as the multiple different ways to solve linear equations, using removing brackets, combining like terms, transposing terms, um, removing denominators, and all that good stuff. But starting in this lesson, we will be taking what we've learned in those past four or five lessons and applying that them to actual word problems. So in this lesson, we're going to be looking at linear equations in geometry. Chapter five, apply knowledge of linear equations in solving geometry problems. Again, this is going to be um, sort of, you can think of this as part one of our linear equations in word problems um, lesson. Analyze the quantitative relationships and equivalent relationships in complex problems with the help of 3D and 2D shapes. Apply linear equations to solve geometry problems. Yes, you may think that linear equations are part of algebra and therefore have not much to do with geometry, but you know, everywhere in mathematics, it's just all about values and their, and their relationships between those values. And linear equations are really just a way to describe those relationships and finding those relationships. So really, you can apply linear equations to geometry problems as well. Archimedes measured the volume of this crown in a very clever way. Do you know how he measured it? Well, what he did was he took the volume of this crown and put it in a, cil and put it in a cylinder. So basically what he did was he changed the, sh so here you can think of this as a cylinder container. What he did was he put this crown in a, wa in water. So there was some water in this container and he put, placed the crown in it. And then he measured how much the water rose once the crown sunk, had sunk in. So this gave him the volume in the shape of a cylinder, which was much easier to calculate than this complex shape of the crown. So what hasn't changed in the process? And in turn, I also want you to think about what has changed in the process. So what has changed in the process is the shape of the crown, because you're putting, you're turning this shape into a much more simpler cylinder. But what hasn't changed is its volume. The volume of the crown still stay, stay the same. So that's where we're gonna get into the isometric transformation of shapes. A rectangle is formed by a wire that is 10 meters long. If the length of the rectangle is 1.4 meters more than the width, what are the lengths and what is the length and width of the rectangle? So what hasn't changed in the process? What hasn't changed is still this wire that's 10 meters long. No matter what lengths, um, what is the length or width of this rectangle, the perimeter still stays the same. It's still a 10 meter long wire. The perimeter or some of the lengths and widths of the rectangle still remains constant. And by getting this equivalent relationship, that's where we can begin thinking about writing down an equation. So here's a rectangle, right? We have x meters and um, x plus 1.4 meters. So the length plus width times two is equal to the perimeter. So let the width of the rectangle be x meters and the length be x plus 1.4 meters. Therefore, x plus 1.4 plus x times two is equal to 10. In salt, x is equal to 1.8. This rectangle has a length of 3.2 meters and a width of 1.8 meters. See how that one little question asking yourself, what hasn't changed 
just asking yourself that one little question, what hasn't changed in this process, will give you, will really lead you to the rest of this. So just the way of thinking about it. What is the equivalent value? What stays the same? If the length of the rectangle is 0 0.8 meters more than the width, how many meters are the length and width of the rectangle? What is the change in area of the rectangle surrounded by, surrounded by it compared with the previous rectangle? So this, I'm going to change this problem because this is worded a bit confusing. So what is the change in area of the rectangle compared with the previous rectangle? Again, ask yourself, what hasn't changed? What hasn't changed is the area. I mean, sorry, what hasn't changed is the perimeter. So just like it's, we're, this is really the exact same problem and the exact same solution as the last problem, except the instead of 1.4, it's 0 0.8. So, Sorry, this should be plus 0 0.8. Okay. So we first set the width of this rectangle as x meters and the length as x plus 0 0.8 meters. We set the equation x plus 0 0.8 plus x times 2 is equal to 10. Solved, x is equal to 2.1. So therefore, 2.1 plus 0 0.8 is equal to 2.9. Since this length is 2.9 meters and the width is 2.1 meters, this second rectangle has an area of 6.09 meters squared. The previous rectangle, you still multiply, you have a area of 5.76 meters squared. So the area of this rectangle would be 0 0.33 meters uh, meter square larger than the area of the previous rectangle. Okay, now there's another question. What is the length and width of the rectangle? So if the length and width of the rectangle are equal, so now it forms a square, what would be the side length of the square? And what is the change in area of the square it encloses compared with the rectangle in question two? Well, think about it. There are four sides, each of the sides are the same, and they add up to 10 meters because that's what we were given at the very beginning. So what we do is we divide 10 by 4, or you could do it this way, x plus x times 2 is equal to 10, kind of the same idea. Solved, one side length would be 2.5 meters. But therefore, the side length of the square is 2.5 meters. If you square that, you get 6.25 meters squared, which would be the area. Its area increases from the last rectangle by, you subtract the two areas, and you have 0 0.16 meters squared. So this leads us to one conclusion, and that is, even though all of these rectangles had the same perimeter, the same length wire surrounding it, it can enclose a larger area. And why is that? Example one, two wires of equal length winds around a square and a circle respectively. So both of these, so the circumference of the circle and the perimeter of the square are the same. It is known that the side length of the square is two times pi minus two meters longer than the radius of the circle. So here, I will be underlining this very important part. So side length of the square is this much longer than the radius of the circle. This is a very important um, equivalent relationship. Always look for keywords like is. Okay, and also equal length. Circle that. Find the length of these two wires and explain with reasoning who has the la larger area. I want you to pause the video and attempt this problem on your own before going through this together. Analysis. 
The, the key to comparing the areas of the two figures is to obtain the radius of the circle and the side length of the square through the equivalent relationship given in the question, which is perimeter of the square is equal to the perimeter or circumference of the circle. Let the radius of the circle be r meters and the side length of the square as 2 plus 2 times pi minus 2 meters. So our equation would be our equation would be 2 pi r is equal to 4 times the sum of 2 r, 2 pi, and negative 4. Solved, r is equal to 4. Therefore, the length of the wires is 8 pi meters. The circle has an area of 60 pi meters squared, and the square has an area of 4 pi squared. And since 4 pi times 4 is greater than 4 pi times pi, Therefore, 16 pi is greater than 4 times pi squared. In conclusion, the circle has a larger area. The two wires have a length of 8 pi meters, and the circle has a larger area. That is our answer. Conclusion. The first one is the shape and area have changed. So there, these are the two circumstances, this, the two scenarios that can occur. The shape and the area have changed, but the circumference has not changed. So it's also saying the same perimeter can enclose a different area. The second scenario is the shapes and perimeters are different, but the relationship between the perimeters can still can be found instead. So even though the two shapes and their perimeters are different, there still can be a relationship between the perimeters. Equivalent volume transformation of shapes. Let's look at this problem. There is a cylindrical water tank with a bottom diameter of 4 meters and a height of 4 meters. Now that the building is undergoing maintenance and renovation, in order to reduce the occupied area of the original storage tank on the roof, its bottom diameter needs to be reduced from 4 meters to 3.2 meters. Then under the premise of the same volume, what will the height of the water tank become? So this is worded kind of confusingly, but if you reread it a couple of times to understand it, all it's asking is basically, you have this, but you want to reduce its bottom, di its bottom diameter length. So then if it, want, if it is to have the same volume, what would the height become? The height, hint, it must become taller. So first, if the height of the water tank is set to be x meters, fill in the following table. Pause the video and do this on your own. Okay, and according to the analysis in the table, find out the equivalent relationship. This is what you should have gotten for your table. Um, so the old water tank has a base radius meter of, uh, in meters of 2 meters. The old water tank has a height of 4 meters and a volume of pi times 2 squared times 4 meters. The new water tank would have 1.6 meters as its base radius, its height as x meters, and its volume as pi times 1.6 squared times pi uh, times x meters squared, meters cubed. So here it should say cubed. So what is the equivalent relationship? Since we know the two volumes have to be the same, this would have to be equal to this. So pi times 2 squared times 4 has to be equal to pi times 1.6 squared times pi. And if we solve that, x is equal to 6.25, meaning that this new water tank will have to have a height of 6.25 meters. Let's do another problem. A toothpaste outlet has a diameter of 5 millimeters. Karen squeezes out one centimeter of toothpaste every time she brushes her teeth. Such a toothpaste can be used 36 times before running out. This brand of toothpaste has launched a new package with the diameter of the outlet changed to 6 millimeters instead of 5 millimeters. Karen squeezes out one centimeter of toothpaste each time according to the habit, 
So then how many times can this toothpaste be used? And also note, both of these toothpaste out, toothpastes have the same amount of toothpaste in them, so their volume is the same. Well, let's assume that this new toothpaste can be used x times. And this would be the equation we get. Pi times 2.5 squared times 10 times 36 is equal to pi times 3 squared times 10x. This toothpaste can be used a total of 25 times. So think, what are the main steps in solving problems with linear equations? First, we read. Read the problems to get the numbers and relationships. Then we set. We set reasonable variables and include the unit. So this number two is very important. I cannot stress how important this is because once you have the right variables, you know what is your goal. You know what you need to find. List. List the equations according to the equivalent relationships. And also sometimes setting variables aren't so easy. Sometimes you really have to think about what is a reasonable variable that will help you get your wanted results. Okay, so anyway, our number four step would be solve. Of course, find the solution of the equation. And then always check. So always check for any of um, the common mistakes we went over in the previous lessons. Check if your solution is correct, that if it's reasonable, and if it answers the question correctly. Because sometimes you may need to re-substitute, and that's totally fine. And you have to answer. Remember, you're answering the question correctly. You're giving it the information it wants. And remember to include the unit. Class summary. Today, we learned all about linear equations and geometry word problems. So we have the isometric transformation of shapes, which is keeping the same volume. Um, and, I mean, keeping the same perimeter around a shape, but then its, its um, area is different. Equivalent volume transformation of shapes and the steps to solving word problems with linear equations, which is read, set, list, solve, check, and answer. We learn to analyze the quantitative relationships and equivalent relationships in complex word problems with the help of 3D and 2D shapes. We also learn to apply linear equations to solve geometry problems. Thank you so much for watching through Inquisitive Kids. In the, in the next lesson, we will be learning about linear equations, but in sales problems, which is a type of financial literacy. If you would like to be notified for that, remember to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll get a little notification when we upload that video. Thank you so much for watching through Inquisitive Kids, and see you next time.